Welcome to the Dashboard Effect Podcast. I'm Brick Thompson. I'm Caleb Oaks. How's it going, Caleb? Pretty good. All right. So on our last few episodes, we've been talking about AI and all of the new functionality that's coming out of Microsoft that we learned about at the Build Conference and, and since then in the last five, six weeks. Um, and it's fascinating stuff. And I think we're going to stay on those topics for a bit. But today, I think it makes sense for us to back up for a minute and talk about some of the basics of data and databases just to make sure people understand some of those concepts. So as we continue down some of these more complex things um, that are coming with the generative AI and co-pilots and all that, there's a good base of knowledge for understanding what we're talking about. I, I think that's good. I think you know what helps me a lot is understanding those foundational concepts and kind of being able to connect those to some of the more advanced things. Right. I mean, one of the one of the quotes from the build conference, data is the fuel that powers AI or exactly. something like that. So you got to have a good yeah. handle on, you know, how data works and, you know, how it's laid out, how it's structured, how it is generated in the world. And then um, how you might be able to use that is what you can do once you understand some of the basics, how you might be able to use that to do some more advanced things. Yeah, perfect. Right. OK, so. Let's start in this episode talking about what is a database? How's, how's data organized in it? From a conceptual level, we won't talk about a specific, well, we will probably talk about specific technologies, but yeah. won't focus on one. So how do you describe what a database is? So I think the easiest way to think about, and maybe even go one layer below that, is just talking about um, tables, really tables. And below that, we're talking about rows, and we're talking about columns um, that make up a table. So oh, an easy way to think about that is an Excel sheet, right? If you've got an Excel sheet that has, it's laid out, obviously you can do all kinds of crazy stuff with an Excel sheet, but you know it's laid out, you've got columns, which are your A, B, C, D across the top, and then you've got rows, which are your numeric one, two, three, four, five, down the left-hand side of the Excel sheet, and that's your rows and columns. Okay, so a database is made up of tables. Tables are made up of rows and columns. You can you can think of a table as like an Excel spreadsheet. If you're in Excel, there's multiple tabs. Across the bottom, one of those tabs is a table. The letters across the top of your columns, the numbers down the side of your rows. And that's basically how data is stored in a database, uh, 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 most transactional databases. And by transactional database, I mean like a database in your business systems, like your CRM or your ERP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's give an example of what, how and what kind of data you would store in a table in those columns and rows. Yeah. So I think, I think an easy one to uh, attach to is like if you have a CRM, for example, right? you're going to have something like contacts within that CRM and, um, you know, you, you might have a list of it. So you might have fields, fields, columns across the top that would be named something other than A, B, C, D, right? So you'd have maybe a contact name, first name, a last name, maybe a phone number, something like that. So that would make up your table and you'd have many of them. So you have your columns and you'd have many different contacts, which would make up your rows. So that becomes your, your contacts table. Okay, and so you slipped into a little uh, database speak there. So in a database table, you have records. That's the equivalent of a row in Excel. Mm -hmm. And you have fields, which are the different parts of a record, and that's the equivalent to columns in Excel. Yeah, exactly. Perfect, okay. Yeah. And so you might have, as you said, uh, to give an even simpler example, let's say you just wanted a database of pieces of fruit and what color they are. Column A could be like the name of the fruit, like apple, and column B could be the color, like red. Yeah. And then the second row could be pear and green. Yeah, okay. Um, good, I like that. So how does that data get into a database? Let's say, let's stay on your CRM example. Yeah. How does that get there? So you've probably got some, you know, salesperson or something, or some maybe a marketing person that um, generates this contact, right? They, they meet the person or they find them online or something like that. So they're going to want to store that person's information inside the CRM for whatever use later. But um, so they're going to enter the data uh, in this scenario, right? There's all kinds of other scenarios. Like you may have 
um, you know, like button clicks or something in, in online or a right, machine you're running that's like collecting data yeah. that way. But we've all put in like enter your email address and phone number to get this free white paper. Right. That might make an entry into your CRM yeah, system. Yeah, probably goes into your contacts. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, you you do that, and so someone puts in all right. This person, their first name is this, their last name is that, and here's their phone number. It's just like adding a new row inside of your Excel sheet. Yeah. Right. Okay. So the next concept I think that can be confusing is this concept of relationships. So in your CRM system, you might have a lot of different tables um, with different fields, different columns, Mm -hmm. storing data. Um, First of all, why would you have multiple tables? Why not put everything in one table? Yeah, that's a, that's a, Good question. I think that uh, (laughs) there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, But the primary one is that you don't want to have to update uh, information across or a bunch of records. So if you've got, let let me just take a step back. So let's say you've got your contacts table, but those contacts, they work at a company. So you might, the company is going to have its own set of, of attributes, right? It might have address. It might have um, other things like the name of the company and where it's located and something like that. And then you have your contacts and you may have a bunch of people that work at that company and they may not be in the same location. It's totally different, right? So, um, but let's say you've got 50 contacts that work at company A. Um, you could put company A on all of those contacts as another attribute and everything else that goes along with the company. So if you have a company associated with every contact and you're putting that in that contact table, um, you might have a field for company name, company address, company phone number. But if you have multiple contacts that are all at that same company, say company A, you're now repeating that company name, that company address, that company phone number, which is not efficient. So that's why we get to having separate tables. So how does separate tables help you solve that problem? Yeah. So what you would do then is you would split out that company information into its own table. Think of it as like a new sheet inside of your Excel sheet. So you'd have your contact sheet, and then you have your company sheet, and you'd have all of your contacts in the contact sheet, and then you'd have all of your companies in the company sheet. And it would be one row per company and then one row per contact on separate on, sheets, on separate sheets yeah. right <clears throat> so how you would then make that connection to say like all these contacts work at this company is you would keep them separate keep the sheets separate but then you would pro- you would want to add something that looks up to your company sheet you know in, and we're talking about tables here but just think of it as an ex- that excel sheet that would say this person, uh, these gr- or this group of contacts work at company A. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> so then that it's typically like a unique identifier to where it would say company A has an ID of one, and then or it's row one. Let's so let's yeah, let's just say the Excel one. paradigm. Yeah. So each company's on a different row, and so if you know company A is on row six, for example, on the company sheet, then you can just put row six in another column for each contact that's part of company A. Right, exactly. And you can go find that. Yeah, exactly. And then and then you can go find it, right, or with a VLOOKUP or whatever you want to do yeah, at that right. point, and then you can get, get that data. So then the benefit of that is if you want to change something about company A, as long as you don't number. change its position, right, yeah. in, the, in the table, which you wouldn't do anyway. Right. Um, you know, you change the phone number of company A. Now you can, from contact, from one of your contacts that, as part of company A, you can reference that new phone number. Okay, so instead of having to go through every contact in the contact list and change the phone number for company A, however many contacts you have for company A, you only have to change the phone number on the company exactly. sheet, on the company table one time, and because the contacts are referencing that, they all get the benefit of that one change. Right. Okay. Yeah, I, easy, easy. <laughs> I hope it was. Yeah, I think uh, we're doing our best to kind of make this simple. Uh, and, and I'm worried that it's still maybe conceptually a little hard, but I, I like the Excel, uh, the Excel example there. So that, that covers the concept of tables, mm-hmm. which have rows and columns, or in, more in uh, database speak, you've got records and fields. 
Um, those are exactly the same thing. And then tables are like different sheets in Excel. They have different sets of data. And then you can have relationships between tables yep. by having a row ID from one table that you look at, that you reference in the other table to, to see related data. Exactly. Um, so that sort of covers the concept of keys in databases. When you hear someone say a key, they're really talking about that analogous row number. Mm -hmm. And in a database table, it's not a row number exactly. It's a right. it's an ID, usually a number. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to be a row number, though. It's some kind of unique identifier. Yep. Okay, yep. great. Yep, that won't change, right? Okay. So that took us longer than I expected to explain that concept. <laughs> Why don't we stop here for today and in our next episode, let's start talking about why you would ever want to get access to that data in any way other than through the system where it's being aggregated. So you've got data in your CRM system. Why do you want to get access to that except for through pages or screens on the CRM system or reports on the CRM system? Yeah, sounds good. All right. All see right. you soon. Thanks. Thanks.